for any of you, I mean, what's been maybe the the hardest challenge of dealing with a, with the heritage part of the heritage brand? The part of design that you that steps away from the physical. So it's fully experience, 100%, right? What you feel, what you smell. Once we start touching upon that, then it becomes really kind of problematic and there's a lot of questions. We also deal with space on the architecture side of things. And there, there's a huge, huge question, right? How do you bring your brand as you move through a building or a museum or through an airport? So at that moment, we have to rely on, on the team and the cross-pollination. So we have you know, the car designers, we have the boat designers, we have the industrial designers, and we just sit on the, in the table and we put the problem and we find different ways of solving that. But it's not, it's not a, an obvious answer right away. There's a lot of brainstorming that needs to happen. It's magic when it happens. It's, it's hard to kind of lay out how you do that, but you kind of put in a bit of the heritage, um, you put in, you know, there's a certain level of making it modern. Um, and especially, you know, as we talk about heritage brands, that, that's always been my forte. And, you know, Timex I've been working with for the last five or six years, and Red Wing's another one, and I, I, so on and so forth. And I've always enjoyed it because I get to play in someone else's sandbox and get to play with all their toys and come up with something new. And a lot of times, a lot of what it is is I come in and, as an outsider and it's much easier for me to go in and almost act like a curator where I'm pulling something out that, you know, the team has probably seen a dozen times and then think about it and I can just twist it slightly and, and put a spotlight on it and that's usually what makes something rise. But it does take, you know, there's a little bit of politics in there. There's, you know, the company's emotion, your emotion, it's, it's tough, but at the same time, it's beautiful when, it, when you pull it off because you see both, at least when I do my collaborations specifically, you see both things rise together to where they couldn't have gotten to without that movement. But it is a challenge, but a lot of it just comes from gut. I would imagine, Todd, with your business that it's also about the moment, right? It's yeah. all those things and also what's, what's happening in context, the context of whatever it is you're trying to design and, and what's happening. Because that's, uh, that's certainly something that I've noticed with working at Harley Davidson is there's, there are moments where it's, you know, you can kind of push the boundaries and there are moments where you need to kind of pull back and do the heritage thing and lean into that a little bit more. Um, one of our biggest challenges is uh, you talked about dealing with tradition and it's, we have such, there's, our customers are amazing and they're, they're so passionate about our brand but they're very resistant to how you change it and how you evolve it. You know, I shouldn't say resistant, but they're very concerned with how you, how you evolve it. So every, every little tweak you make to one of our motorcycles, um, people notice and we, we, get, you know, we get very passionate, uh, you know, transparent feedback about, hey, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. And, and we talked a little bit yesterday about, you know, what's the right way to kind of bring, bring, the, next gen bring the current generation along, but also attract you know, make the product attract a new generation of, of riders as well. And that's, that's really the, you know, that, that to me are, are probably the, the most in-depth, involved, intense conversations that we have in the studio back in Milwaukee is just tr trying to get that formula right. You know, it's, there's two knobs, there's evolution and revolution, and you got to get those right on each, mm -hmm. each product. So um, yes. that to me, that's, that's probably the biggest challenge for us. A lot of heritage products or vintage products they express a point of view of, a, of an individual or a small group of people. And they're, they're not kind of filtered through this modern process that corporations have developed. And so I think that's why people instinctively gravitate towards them and find emotional resonance, not just because they have childhood memories, but also there's, there's a soul that came through from an individual point of view. Uh, and I think that companies today are getting smarter about trying to infuse that again, rather than just going to the signifiers, as I just mentioned, of like, okay, we'll put this chrome grill on the side of it because that car in 1956 had a chrome grill. I mean, that's, that's kind of like the lazy approach, but I think that companies today are getting smarter about finding the underlying feeling about stuff and trying to inject it again.